Breaking news tonight. The Spokane Police Department looking for a missing 64 year old woman last seen on Saturday in the West Central neighborhood. Mary Peeler, who you see right there on your screen. She was last spotted in the area of Boone and Maple back on August 1st. Mary suffers from dementia, bipolar and schizophrenia. So if you see Mary, please call Crime Check. That number is 456-2233. That number is also right there on your screen. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Creme 2 News at 6 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. And I'm Whitney Ward. Thank you for being here. Washington State now seeing a big rise in COVID-19 cases as well as hospitalizations. State health officials say they're concerned, believing the increase is linked to the Delta variant. The Spokane Regional Health District shared an update on what these numbers look like right here in Spokane. Creme 2's Amanda Rowley joining us live for the newsroom tonight with the latest on that data. Amanda. Yeah, Mark and Whitney, as of today, the Spokane Regional Health District is reporting 272 new cases. It's also reporting 30 new COVID hospitalizations from Monday. That brings the latest total to 85. Now, we have not confirmed the current capacity at Spokane hospitals, but both Providence, Sacred Heart, and Multicare say they are seeing an increase in COVID hospitalizations, but they do have room to treat people who need care. However, Interim Health Office Dr. Frank Velasquez says hospitals are starting to reach a total they should not exceed on a regular basis. Mark, Whitney. Uh, Amanda, what impact do we think this could have as when we talk about hospitalizations here locally? Yeah, that's a great question. So Dr. Velasquez says Spokane's hospitals are very busy right now, and that's not only because of the recent increase in hospitalizations, but also because they are seeing a lot of high acuity patients at the same time. And while the Delta variant, though, is circulating throughout Spokane County, other strains of the virus are also spreading quickly in our area as well. Take a listen. So that's something that we're tracking very closely, but it's a number that changes every day because uh, patients get transferred between uh, services depending on the acuity that they have and um, patients get discharged to uh, other uh, care facilities. And one last thing, Amanda, when hospitals became overwhelmed with their COVID patient capacity, they paused or rescheduled some elective surgeries, right? So do we know if they are again considering doing that? Yeah, it's a question I've seen a lot on social media today, actually. So rescheduling or canceling elective surgeries is a strategy that hospitals can use to open up resources when needed. But according to Dr. Velasquez, at this time, Spokane hospitals are not discussing canceling or rescheduling elective surgeries. Reporting in the newsroom, Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. Our other top story tonight, former Spokane police officer Nathan Nash has been arrested in connection with a second rape investigation. This is in addition to the rape case that led to his firing from SPD. Newly filed court documents show what led to Nash's arrest this morning. Kremtu's Ian Smay live in the studio tonight. And Ian, you have more details from those documents, right? Yeah, Mark Whitney, the arrest stemmed from an investigation by the Spokane County Sheriff's Office Sexual Assault Unit. Nash is currently in the Spokane County Jail on charges of second degree rape and unlawful imprisonment. Now, these charges are separate from the case that led to him being fired from the Spokane Police Department. This recent investigation started on July 20th of this year after the victim reported the rape to the Spokane Police Department, who then passed the case to the Sheriff's Office. That's because the alleged rape happened when he was an officer with the Police Department. According to court documents, Nash met the 40 year old female victim while responding to a call that she had been physically assaulted by her neighbor on July 6, 2019. The documents say she told police she identifies as being disabled and has a learning disability. As he was leaving the scene, documents say Nash gave the victim his phone number and said he would be back the next day to take photos of her injuries. The victim told police the next day she had received a call from Nash from an unfamiliar number in which he told her he was coming to quote, take pictures and to wear a dress. The documents say the victim reported Nash showed up alone to take photos and that during the encounter he allegedly raped her. Documents say that after the alleged rape, the victim reported that Nash pulled her into her bathroom and she thought he was going to drown her. According to the victim, Nash told her to clean up. The documents say the victim reported having consensual sex with Nash one time in the weeks after when he came over to talk about the previous physical assault by her neighbor. The victim also reported, reported suffering PTSD and trauma from the rape. Now, if this sounds familiar, that's because the circumstances are very similar to the details of the case for which he is currently awaiting trial. That case stemmed from a sexual assault reported in October 2019, and in that case, the victim alleged that Nash had assaulted them when he responded alone during a follow-up. Nash was eventually charged with second and third degree rape and official misconduct in that case. He was also fired from the Spokane Police Department and until this morning was free after being released on his own recognizance after a November 2019 arraignment. 
Nash is likely to appear in court tomorrow and is being held without bail at the Spokane County Jail. Second degree rape is a class A felony in Washington, meaning Nash could face life in prison. Mark Whitney. Ian, thank you very much. The Spokane Police Department meantime has released a statement in light of Nash's arrest. It reads in part, quote, the Spokane Police Department is deeply troubled by a new accusation against Nathan Nash, a former SPD officer. The latest allegation was reported to SPD last month and SPD immediately referred the information to the Sheriff's Office for investigation. It continues. The Spokane Police Department takes these accusations of officer misconduct very seriously. In 2019, when the first allegation was made, Nash was promptly removed from patrol by a supervisor. It goes on to read today. The department echoes Chief Meidel's statement from 2019. We would like to thank those who showed great courage by coming forward and bringing these allegations to light. New results are in for last night's primary election in Washington. Our political reporter Casey Decker is standing by now with the latest numbers. Casey, what do you got for us? Yeah, I want to take a look right now at Spokane City Council, Northeast Spokane. We knew that Jonathan Bingle was going to be moving forward to the general election. Remember, the top two candidates in each election will move on to the general regardless of party. He's sitting pretty good there. He's the one conservative in the race, so it makes sense he got about half the vote, the conservative vote. But look at this down here. These are the two progressive candidates, and they were already pretty close last night. This race has gotten even closer. We're seeing 27% to 27%. Last night, Nagmana Shirazi led Luke Jasmine III by fewer than 50 votes today it's fewer than 30 votes this race is getting very very close so it is something we will follow with every ballot drop over the next couple of weeks so let's go ahead and take a look as well at district three now in this race things are pretty much staying the same progressive ex opponent conservative michael ish both had very strong campaigns both look poised to move on to the general election but one thing i did want to point out we were pretty surprised last night that progressive lou hill wasn't performing as well she was down in fourth place she has moved up now into third place above karen kearney she's sitting at 13 percent still though won't be enough to move her on to the general election despite the fact that she had uh, more donors than almost any other candidate in any race uh, so that was an interesting outcome but it's looking like zapone and lish will be going head to head in November. Let's also take a look at one of the positions for school board. Number one and two are staying the same as they were last night. Conservative Katadine and progressive Riley Smith. They both raised the most amount of money, so not a huge surprise that they're the top two moving on. One change, though, we were pretty surprised last night to see Rana Metu uh, in fourth place because he had the backing of the teachers' unions, you know, normally a pretty strong endorsement to get in a political election, especially for school board. Uh, he, however, was in fourth place. Today, he has moved up into third, still, though, looking like it won't be enough to move him on to the general election. It'll be Dean and Smith, most likely, basing off in November. Last night, we also didn't talk about central values Valley School Board, so I want to take a look at that as well. Here we've got three candidates, all with strong showings above 30%, uh, but the top two right now are Pam Orba and Rob Linnebarger. Now, interesting thing about both of these candidates, they are both opposed to COVID protocols, masks in schools and that sort of thing. They're both pretty conservative candidates. Jared Von Tobel was the more moderate candidate, but he's sitting down there in third place, looking like he will not advance. So either one of these candidates is going to be opposed to masking and other sorts of restrictions in Central Valley School District. Uh, Rob Linnebarger, also a far right wing candidate. He's claimed that COVID is a hoax and things like that. But Orba right now, in the lead. One other thing I wanted to note yesterday we were talking about turnout and how it was looking very, very low, just over 18%. That has changed. It's now closer to 25%. And in fact, last night, uh, more ballots came in. So now there's still about 10,000 ballots left to count. So some of these races could still change. A lot of ballots left to count. A lot of people just voted really late. And so now the turnout is looking to be closer to 25%. So that's an improvement, certainly, though still only about one in four registered voters weighing in. And it does vary as well from district to district. Very interesting. It's going to be interesting to see where those things land. Casey, thank you very much. Well, DNR is reporting 24 new wildfires were sparked across Washington in the last 24 hours. The majority believed to have been caused by lightning. Now, eastern Washington will again be under another red flag warning starting tomorrow. So we turn now to Tom Sherry. What do we need to know as we kind of get ready for the second half of the week? Well, we're finally going to be tracking cooler weather and we're seeing, in, uh, we're seeing improved air quality. Right now, the AQI is at 97. That puts us at the high end of the moderate air quality range. You remember this time yesterday we were in the unhealthy range, so great to 
see that change. Why is the change? Because we've got some weather moving in. We've got thunderstorms and rain that we think is going to move and that. Well, that's why everywhere you see shaded in red right there. We've got a fire uh, weather warning or a red flag warning through Thursday evening. Again, that's because of the numerous thunderstorms we're expecting, which could produce that cloud to ground lightning, which may start some fires, but it will also bring us rain and mix up the lower levels of the atmosphere. And of course, that will help with our air quality conditions. We're already seeing some rain and thunderstorms at the very bottom of your picture down in areas of southeastern Oregon. But for the most part, Washington and North Idaho uh, still dry. We'll look for an overnight low of 64, another hot one tomorrow, and then it will finally cool down. Look for a high of 94. It'll be cooler on Friday and then on the weekend, slight chance of showers and delightful temperatures. A high of 82 expected Saturday and 80 on Sunday. So we've been talking about thunderstorms being in the forecast. Luckily, that's going to help clean up our air a bit. Let's go outside now to meteorologist Thomas Patrick on what you can expect with the improving air quality and these thunderstorms. Yeah, Tom, you know, rain is really good at taking out air, you know, aerosols and some of that particulate matter out of the atmosphere, which usually leads to improving air quality. But I said usually because we saw that on Sunday and it actually wasn't enough. Such was the raw amount of smoke that we saw. But now things have improved. I can see way more of the sky. The sun was certainly shining a bit brighter today than the last couple of days because that smoke was acting a little bit less like cloud cover on this afternoon. But our area is so sensitive to our weather patterns and when we have static stagnant air, high pressures and heat domes. Well, that can lock that air in place. It actually pushes the atmosphere down and all that smoke along with it, and it can settle into the Columbia Basin a lot, which leads to days after days of unhealthy air quality. But we're kind of getting into the opposite end of that weather pattern, a more unstable one where we can get low pressure areas and convection, which can help mix out all this wildfire smoke and help filter the air where we're sitting. But the best thing that can happen is air mass repair replacement. Our hot and hazy air mass can get replaced by a much cooler one for this upcoming weekend. So hopefully that will give us a bit more permanent relief as opposed to just having a little bit of rain try to help clean out our atmosphere in the meantime. Reporting in Spokane, I'm meteorologist Thomas Patrick. Back to you in the studio. All right, Thomas, thank you very much. And if you would like the latest updates on the unhealthy air quality across the air, across the area, just text the word air to 509-448-2000. We'll send that link right to your phone. All right, still ahead tonight, a law firm has been hired by the NCAA to investigate equality between athletes. So we dig into that report when we come back after the break.